1984 won't be like 1984. Get your iPod. iPod's here. You like your Macintosh. You like your Macintosh. Your Macintosh. Up, up. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, it is the only one that meets that standard. iPod. A thousand songs in your pocket. If today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? <laughs> For the, um, the second day of the Macworld, so as you can hear, my voice is a little bit slowed down or turned down. It's just because of all the parties we went with all those crazy guys. So this one and the other one behind the camera and a third uh, Ger and, a, and another German guy. So the parties yesterday was really cool. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. So we were at. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have met a lot of people, especially at this uh, Mac Heist party with Phil. And before that, we was at Parallels party. So pretty cool guys. And then after we ended up in the Daily Tech Talk party and after we needed to sleep. So Carsten, um, you do some pretty interesting thing. You're like me from Germany, uh, even more more than me. Um, and uh, one of the things you do uh, pretty pretty uh, fast, uh, it's, uh, well, we'll explain it pretty fast, is Liquify. What's Liquify? Well, Liquify is a final replacement and it's not very easy to understand. Um, if you look at it, it takes a little bit of introduction, so we will make a movie about it. We only have a German movie, a really bad one right now. There will be an English movie out soon. And it's a finder replacement or alternative. You can uh, organize all your files. And the important thing about it is that we visualize uh, your files. So you can see that. Maybe it's good if we can film it later on the screen and then you can see a little bit what it is. Or people can go on the website Yeah, can understand of course. And the other thing is, uh, in addition to the visualization, so you have a lot of information on small space, uh, a space, so you can get about 10 times the amount of files that the finder can show, yeah. and still you can navigate it. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is that we have searching and browsing fully integrated okay. uh, into one interface. You can do searching and browsing at the same time okay. in one interface. Okay. So this is things you like, but this is not really like things that make you millionaire? No, not yet. <laughs> you need other things. Yes, that's um, true. And one of those things here is um, you're making those those really nice um, things to clean the screen. First I of all, cloth. Yeah. yeah. We've we've seen it for the French one uh, yeah, right. doing the demo with throwing digital oil on your iBook. <laughs> yes. Is it the reason why you have now a MacBook? <laughs> uh, well, no. It's still alive, and I gave it to my wife, okay. so she's very happy about it. I'm doing the same thing. My wife has also my poor book, uh, 12 inch. So, um, but the cool thing, that, uh, when we was at the Apple Expo, you showed me something hidden on a, on a backpack, and you told me you're going to see it in a few months. And now it's there, so what's this new cool thing? Yeah, now is the time to show you the new thing. Yeah. And we will also have a very dramatic uh, <laughs> demo here. Yeah. 
So it's um, a new bag. There are thousands of laptop bags out there, so maybe people think, why do you need another bag? And it's because the bag that I always wanted was not there on the market. So I was longing for a bag that I can just use one hand and one second to get rid of my bag and one hand and one second to get it out. And it should be very protective, so if the, the bag drops on the ground, it should not be too bad. And also, I also wanted it to be modular. I didn't want to buy one backpack or one laptop bag and then I'm stuck to it. I wanted to be able to take any bag I want and just make it be a laptop bag. So we designed this module that protects the laptop and it's like a laptop sleeve but a very high protective laptop sleeve that is, uh, I will show you. So maybe we can show us. Yeah. So that's that's the bag, but that's not no, the bag. That's not the bag. This this is just any you can take any bag you want, yeah. where it fits in. So this is just any uh, bag, normal bag, right? And so now I I want to get to my laptop. So I just have one hand okay. and just grab in my bag and I pull it out like this. Yeah. And here's it. Yeah. And if I want to drop it, I just go and I just drop it in here like that. And I don't need to be very uh, soft with it, because we have very thick bottom protection. And actually, it's that thick that you can just take the bag, I just close it that it doesn't fall out and you just... Now it's oh, dangerous. Just watch at this. Oh, watch for the people. Don't, don't kill anybody. <laughs> You've almost killed somebody. Yeah, so the laptop is inside this bag and nothing will happen to it because it has the shell and I want to show you how this works. If you, if you look at this, the shell comes with a very strong bottom protector, which okay. is this one. Is It has three layers that really absorb the shock. And you can also, of course, set the size of it to any laptop size. And this bag comes in different sizes, of course. It comes in vertical orientation, which is this one with, with, as a top loader. It comes in horizontal. Yeah. And so uh, there are many different sizes. You can also take it as a standalone, yeah. just with a strap hang it around your shoulder but really it was made to be inside another bag so it's a, just a protective sleeve to be inside a, a backpack or any other bag that's what it's about okay okay that's pretty cool so uh, where are all the infos for that um well i will put them online online tomorrow i think because <laughs> it's brand new so the website won't be the this podcast won't be online tomorrow so and it will be on the uh on our i stuff website so this okay. is i minus stuff Dot de. Okay. And there you can find it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, too. Thanks. My name is Zenith, and I represent Harman, JBL. Okay. So what do Harman, Carlin, and JBL does? So JBL in particular um, is sort of like a fun, younger brand of, you know, the Harman umbrella. Um, it's really aimed at the next generation, so we really like to get sort of like the audience. And you can tell by our design that we really, you know, cater to that audience. Um, if you look over here, we have the JBL Spyro. And this came out about two months ago, and it's a 2.1 sound system. And if you look closer over here, behind is where you connect the iPod. So you just it's just a plug and play. You plug in your iPod, and these two little speakers right here is where the sound projects from. And it's really user-friendly to get the volume. You'll see right here, you just tap right here, and tap right there for the volume. So we think it's really fun. Um, another cool thing about this product, it comes in four colors. Right now it's available in black and white, but it's also available in the retro blue. And we also have a fuchsia color, which is right there behind you. Um, I think girls in particular really love that one. I know I really want one. Um, another thing that we're going to have later on this year, let me walk you over here. So this is an example of one, um, you know, potential skin. Um, they'll be coming out later this year, and this is just, just really individualize your Spyro. Um, those are great, basic, um, you know, fun things. But this is if someone who just really loves our products and really wants to make it their own. Um, so look for this later this year. We think it's really exciting. People are really loving it so far. So it's pretty exciting. That's one of them. 
Um, I so is it like is it like um, there are pretty fine skins, or can you make your own skin or whatever? We haven't decided that just yet. We know that we're working with a few different people, so people can individualize them as much as possible. Okay. Um, but we'll have a selection, so there'll be something for everyone. Yeah. The controls on the other one are just touch control. It's just, just touch exactly. So it's very user friendly. You touch it, it goes up. Touch it, goes down. It's just it's so simple. Just a bit like the iPhone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> so what else do you have here? Okay, so let's see. We'll go over here. The Harman Kardon Go and Play. It's our newest generation. It's sort of like the reinvention of the boombox once again. It's The sound is amazing. It's super powerful. It operates with batteries. So you can take it anywhere you want. Carry it over your shoulder. Pick it up with your hand. Take it to the park, it's mobile, it goes everywhere. Um, we think it's really popular, again, with the next generation, but it has a Harman Kardon sound, which is sort of the higher end under the Harman umbrella. So it's catered towards all of our audiences. So we the ghetto blaster of the new generation. Yes, absolutely, I love that. <laughs> and I think that, you know, the, the look is really good, the feel is really good, so we think it's going to be really popular. You guys are pretty well known for selling those things that are pretty much classical. Yes. Every Mac user has that. Yes, absolutely. Everyone has that. And it's funny because these have been out for a while, but people are still asking us yeah. about them, um, which is why we still have them displayed over here. So I think some things will have a classic look yeah. and they'll always be yeah. there. So. It's like a standard. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the, the design and the sound is really what makes um, yeah. you know, the Harman brand really um, focuses on sound and clarity yeah. and all that. And you know, people love that no matter how old the product is. Yeah. So yeah, we still get tons of inquiries about it. What was the feedback here from the people coming on the booth? So far, it's been amazing, um, especially in the way the stuff is looking. People love the way it looks, the fact that there's so many colors and options. They can really make it their own. It's not just a standard, here you go. It's sort of, you know, do you want do you want pink or do you want, you know, retro blue? Um, we really like to personalize it to our audience, so people are loving everything. Have you seen the iPhone? I have, I have. I don't know if I want one yet. I think it looks great, but I think with any first generation product, yeah. um, you know, we'll see. So. Are you guys thinking about that in terms of integrating it later, of course? Um, we don't know. Um, we do, you know, we love Apple products, but at, that, at this point I couldn't really comment on that. Yeah, but it's a duck connector, so... I'm sorry? It's a duck connector, just like a standard one? Sure, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll keep in touch. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye. My name is Zaina al Hajj and I work for Greenpeace International based in Amsterdam. Okay, and you guys are pretty busy right now doing this Green My Apple action, right? Uh, yes, uh, well, we want it to be as well inside at the Mac yeah. World, but the stand and informing people about the campaign and telling them what we really want Apple to do, but yeah. unfortunately we were denied. So yes, we were going around talking to people, giving them information, and uh, we were there the first day, we were there as well at the Mac Store. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, mm -hmm. our objective is to reach out to the Mac user because we believe Apple does listen to its fan. Yeah. And what we want, actually, we don't want anybody to boycott Apple. What we want, actually, is Apple to raise to the challenge to become a leader, not just in innovation and design, but as well a leader in environmental regulation. Okay. So first of all, we want to really um, um, tell that you guys are all uh, crazy about Apple products and you like uh, Apple products. Well, I mean, if I think we love... We, the, the option here is that, yes, we love Apple. We're not asking people to boycott Apple. Yeah. We're not asking people to stop buying Apple product. What we want is that we want Apple, in addition to designing yeah. cool and new and hip product, to design products that are greener, that are yeah. environmentally sound, and take responsibility for them. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest and strongest message yeah. we want to pass. Okay. I've been giving money to Greenpeace since a few years also, so I like what you do guys, but still tell, I think Apple is not doing any efforts and, and you might see the things um, to extreme. What would you have to say to people that would think that Greenpeace is sometimes thinking too extreme in activism? I mean, extreme is, is the way you look at it. For, for us, it's, it's actually, actually we're asking for the minimum because yeah. the electronic industry is definitely an industry that has changed the way we live our life. We want that industry to start really uh, looking futuristically to take responsibility for the environmental impact of their product and lead us in a way of thinking that in addition to having cool product, we want greener and safer mm -hmm. product. And that's why we are being very tough on the industry 
in our demand, but we really believe it's it's doable because most of these products are available. Uh, uh, most of these uh, components are available okay. on the market. So green components. The, uh, yes, the alternative can be looked at, and this is an industry as well that invests millions and millions of dollars of research. Yeah. So, and that small portion of that research, we want that to include environmental research. Okay, so what's what's the, um, like for the general audience, it's they are like me. We know there are some wrong thing in Apple products like in other companies' products, but what's particularly wrong in which component that can be really bad for the environment? Uh, mainly now the product, the problem is with the plastic that's being used, especially in the wiring. They're still using PVC, which is a polyvinyl chloride. This is a very toxic plastic and it's still being used and there are alternatives and, and we're hoping to have that technology being promoted more and more by the industry. Unfortunately as well there is the brominated flame retardant which is another chemical that is mainly put in the uh, wiring board okay. in the printed wiring board of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the PCs or, or the mobile or the Macs or and that need to be eliminated and they are looking at a lot of alternative uh, for it. Uh, unfortunately there are as well still use of cadmium and lead and mercury in certain uh, in certain screens for example even the macbook pro which is a new uh, product but, and that comply with the european regulation okay. that le that um, uh, ban lead they're still with exemption using uh, in the lcd screen lead in that component although mm -hmm. companies like panasonic has found alternative and they are using it and promoting it and marketing in the mo in, in, in the global market now don't you think it should also be a bit of work from the governments themselves? Because if if the if you are allowed to um, develop a product using those things, uh, there is a problem on the government side. You know what I mean? They should also take care of not allowing you to use those products. Uh, there are regulation. Regulation are being put in place, and actually the regulation that was put in place by the European Union mm -hmm. for protecting the globe, uh, the European market from products that contain lead and cadmium has totally changed the way yeah. the electronic industry thinks. But for us, the, the bureaucratic process of changing anything in any government Takes is too way too long compared to an industry that actually literally developed by the hour. Yeah. <laughs> so I I think the industry has that um, responsibility, being so so much so that much innovative and that much um, really futuristic, okay. to take that initiative from themselves and look. We know these chemicals are, are damaging. We know these chemicals are wrong. Let's look at alternative to okay. to substitute them. What do you think is the problem with Apple not willing you guys to have a booth there inside? Because they should be proud of you loving Apple and wanting to make Apple better because that's all you want. Totally. That was why we were shocked. Where where we were not allowed because I think that I think it was an overreaction from that end. Because really, the purpose of our presence was to reach out to the Mac user and talk to them. Um, but I think um, the answer that we were given that you know a Mac a match between uh, Greenpeace and Apple doesn't fit in a Mac world. I, I think it's an overstatement. And um, yeah, we. We really would love to be yeah. uh, more welcomed here. Okay. Um, be before the interview, we talk about some other companies that are reacting. Like previously, uh, recently, uh, Michael Dell said something pretty cool, which is not always what he says because he's used. He's also used to say some dumb things. But anyways, if there are companies like Dell doing some efforts, I just I just can applaud them. Uh, definitely. That that's that's why for us it's it's really for us it's surprising to see that other companies like Dell, like HP, like Nokia uh, take taking a lead step on the environment while Apple who is known to be very proactive mm -hmm. and very and to be uh, the first one in everything exactly not take that step and not yeah. take that leap yeah okay so um, you have done all um, a special action here at the Apple uh, the Apple store a few days ago we it was uh, basically a symbolic greening of, of the of the entrance mm -hmm. with uh, changing the logo from being white shining white mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. hopefully making it green yeah. uh, the, the message is let's green Apple to the core yeah, yeah, okay. So hopefully Apple will slowly understand the message. Do you have right now, after all those Green My Apple thing, any feedback from Apple or they're still like, we don't hear anything, we don't hear anything, we don't we, see anything? We met them in a few conferences, um, uh, the people we were talking to, and they said that you will hear from us when we have a greener product. Okay. We Personally, we were hoping that Steve Jobs in his keynote speech yeah. uh, presenting the iPhone going to be presenting a green iPhone because that is feasible. Technically, 
likely it is feasible with this size yeah. of a product to put on a market because Nokia is doing it. They have yeah. a number of mobile that are green. So okay. we were hoping that this iPhone going to be green. I mean, till now, we don't know what is the component of the iPhone, uh, but we're still hoping that's going to yeah. be a green one. Okay. Last question is, I think it's pretty important for the people to understand where the biggest problem is. There is a lot of places on Earth that doesn't look the same since in the last 10 or 20 years. I flew over the, over, over the, um, uh, over Grun over the, Grun the Greenland and I've seen from myself with my eyes, there is far less eyes over there than it should be. That's how it looked like. Yeah, I mean, of course, the environment damages that we have, uh, we are including in our environment and our uh, on, on planet Earth is really massive. And, mm -hmm. and like with the electronic waste, I mean, we are generating 20 to 50 million ton of hazardous waste, hazardous toxic waste being dumped on the planet every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. That is massive. And if we're not going to take responsibility for the those product and the way we are generating e-waste I mean mobile now is what 18 months and you dump it yeah. a laptop is now three to four years uh, and then you dump it and get a new one yeah. I mean if we don't recycle these product reuse them and make them recyclable and reusable we're really going to be running into a major mm -hmm. environmental disaster yeah. I mean it's it looks like a tsunami of yeah. electronic waste yeah. invading us is it better in the in Europe than in the US in terms of environment regulation or worse or whatever? I mean, the when it comes to electronic waste, um, uh, electronic industry, yes. What changed the uh, the attitude of the electronic industry has been the regulation that were imposed in in Europe. We haven't seen any regulation whatsoever in the US. It's actually ironic that now uh, March this year, a regulation in China going to come in force, okay. eliminating the production of component that contain lead them cadmium basically following the European yeah. regulation while till now we haven't seen any of that in the US. No, I'm about to start also a political podcast uh, because I'm also interested in politics. It might be that some, change are, some things are changing in the next few years in the US if some guys are turning the country around. So let's hope because you know guys like Al Gore and John Edwards are, are doing a bit more on environment. What's your feeling on that? I mean, for us, it's, it's the responsibility of the politician to lead the way. And it's the responsibility of the politician to mm -hmm. put regulation that protect our life and in our environment okay. and the future of, of, of our uh, children. Yeah. Um, it's their responsibility. Yeah. And yes, it's the, uh, the role of the people to tell the politician mm -hmm. what they want them to do. Yeah. And if they basically deny that we do have a climate change, I yeah. think we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Last thing, what can we do to help Greenpeace in this in this path? What we want people to do is really pass the message for Apple that all of us want yeah. a green Apple. We want a green product. It's very simple. They can go to greenmyapple.org and, and, and choose any creative way that's on the website to mm -hmm. pass the message to Steve Jobs or the management of Apple. Okay. Um, and, and because we believe if we manage to change Apple, the follow, all the industry going to follow with them. Yeah. Well, thank you very much and see you at the next Apple Expo or whatever Expo about Apple. <laughs> Definitely. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're here with my favorite rugby player. How are you doing? Doing well, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, so, you have done some uh, demos here. Yes, absolutely. And, and everybody's like, whoa. We've had good booth traffic. We've been stacked about 10 people deep for the last three days. So we've uh, made a whole podcast and speak a lot of the about the parallels, but best thing is to show it, right? Absolutely. Okay, let's, let's show the people what, what Parallels is. Sure. So what we have here is the release candidate of the Parallels desktop for Mac update. A um, couple of new things in this version. Uh, things I can't show that just work are things like USB 2.0 support, uh, better support for devices like Palm Pilots, PDAs, uh, webcams. ISI support is on the way. should be here in about a week or so. The best thing about this, uh, this new version is usability and how to make it easy for people to use Windows in whatever way they want. So what you're looking at right here is our standard windowed mode where we've got the Windows taskbar just hanging out. Um, we now have dynamically resizable windows. So I can take this, I can let it go, and it'll actually redraw the entire desktop without losing resolution. Um, very cool stuff. Of course, we always have our trusty full screen mode where you can actually work in full screen and make it like a native Windows experience. But what's coolest about this new version is a new feature called Coherence. And what Coherence is, is if I choose to, if I can get my taskbar up there, 
and I open up, say, Microsoft Outlook, which you see how fast it loads. And then I load Internet Explorer. And I'll drag this window a little bit bigger here. So I have these two applications running here on my desktop. And that's great, but we had a lot of users saying, well, you know, this takes up a lot of space. And that's kind of a pain in the ass because I don't, I don't really need the rest of this. I just need Internet Explorer. I just need Outlook. So how do I make it happen? And this is where we came up with coherence mode. So you're gonna, I'm going to enter coherence mode here, and you're going to see what happens. Windows disappears. Windows, disappears. Windows, disappears. Windows disappears. So I can now. That's a pretty good news. Windows disappears. Yes, it is. It's it's one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite things to say. I've said about 50 times today. So what you've got here is you now have Windows applications effectively running natively on your Mac. There's a full Windows installation behind that to offer the stability, to offer the device support, the sound support, the internet connectivity. But you don't ever have to deal with the annoying blue taskbar. What's great about this is that you can actually load Windows applications in your dock. So I can click the Word icon here in my Mac dock and have the Windows application open. If I have got a file, say a text file, I can drag it over to Word and it'll actually open and up. Boom! And boom, it's right like there. Says. Exactly. And then I can take it, I can modify it, I can save it back. Save it to my Windows side, save it to my Mac side, wherever I want to put it. Makes it very, very easy to work with both operating systems at the same time. And obviously you can copy paste from Windows to the Mac. Of course, we've had that actually for a while. So your sync clipboard is actually up to 128K, which is a pretty good sized Word document. It's like a you know a full like white paper sized document with images you can copy it, bang, put it over on the other side. So you've been to the CES the last days? I did. I was at CES on Monday and Tuesday. It was uh, Intense. <laughs> Vista everywhere, right? Vista everywhere. I mean, Microsoft had a, they had a really, they had a hell of a display. I mean, it was, you couldn't turn without banging into something from Vista or Office 2007. I mean, very impressive, very impressive so stuff. What about Vista in parallels? Uh, Vista runs in parallels. Um, that's kind of the short version is that if you have Vista, uh, you can run it in a parallels virtual machine. Okay. And it runs just as well as XP. Okay. Something also pretty cool to insist is this bootcamp integration you have. Yeah, we actually introduced this um, just a couple of weeks ago. We have a lot of users who want to use Bootcamp, but also want to use Parallels. And up until a few weeks ago, it was something where you had to install Windows and Bootcamp, then install Windows and Parallels, and the two sides never really synced up. You just had two copies of Windows, which is really, really annoying. We actually now offer Bootcamp support. Um, and Bootcamp support means that you can actually build a Parallels virtual machine, set it to connect to your Bootcamp partition, and boot your bootcamp partition directly into a Parallels virtual machine. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what about the iPhone? You've seen the iPhone, it's pretty cool, right? I, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, it's definitely it's a wow kind of product. It's, yeah. it's, it's game-changing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen Bertrand to tell him about uh, this USB problem? I have not, but I promised you when we talked last that I would. When I see him, I think I'm going to run into him tomorrow. We'll, uh, we'll talk then. You're here uh, until tomorrow? I am, yep. I'm here all day tomorrow. I received today in my mailbox, my wife told me uh, a box from you, from uh, Tech Tool Pro, because I've been in touch with you guys before. So uh, thank you for that, first of all, and we're going to speak a little bit about your product. So who are you? I'm Christian Pickman, I'm the product manager for Micromat. And um, we're going to show you, give a little introduction of uh, Disk Studio, which is our uh, disk partition. It allows you to create and delete partitions on the fly. Okay, let's partition. Yes, exactly. What we got here is um, our product, and like I said, it allows you to partition the drive. So what is a partition? Partition is a volume that is resonant on a hard drive. Now, since I only have one hard drive and one partition here, I'm going to use a disk image yeah. to demo this product. So let's just say this is one of your hard drives here. You want to add an additional hard drive, or in this case, an additional volume to it. Click the partition button. I'm going to go ahead and expand the window out. And now, I can actually select the number of partitions I wish to create based on the amount of free space on there. Here you can see, this is actually our first, the parent drive. And this represents the data that's on the drive. If there's any data that needs to be moved to create these additional partitions, this studio is intelligent enough to be able to move that information to the highest point on the drive to create the additional partitions on here. Also, if you want to, I'll just do four. You can select different volume formats. You can do UFS, you can do case sensitive, case sensitive journaling if you're running like a server. Or typically, what we have selected is macOS Extended Journal, which is normal for a macOS 10 client. Um, you can also set your partition sizes. So if you want this to be maybe 900 megs, well, actually, my bad, 1.2, actually, 
You can edit this later. No, I'm kidding. There we go. And then you can lock the position. That way it doesn't change. Yeah. You can name it accordingly, however you want to name it. Maybe you want to call it, you know, My Stuff. And My Stuff 2. And then you can create the partitions. Now what it's going to do is going to go ahead and update the partition maps with those additional partitions from the free space that was on the parent volume. Will you guys support also ZFS when it comes with uh, Leopard? When it comes with Leopard, if that's one of the uh, supported file systems, then we'll add it to it. Okay, okay. Um, okay so, and that's actually the biggest advantage of this one in uh, comparison to disk utility is that you can do it on the fly. Exactly. Instead of having to redo the whole entire hard drive, you know, pull all your data off of it to another hard drive and then, you know, bring it back after you've repartitioned it, this allows you to keep the, the data that you have on the drive currently and use the free space that you have on the hard drive to make additional partitions. Uh, after that, I would guess you can uh, merge the partition or something like that, can you? We don't have merging of the partitions or resizing, if you will. If you want to be able to maybe add additional space, one thing you can do is like get rid of one of the partitions, like I'll get rid of this one, I'll delete it, and how HFS Plus works is the partition that's below it, the partition above it, will get that free space. Okay. And so in this case, this one will grow because that one was deleted. Which is practically like merging. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, the other product you have is TechTool Pro. TechTool Pro, which is our um, flagship product. It's our hardware diagnostic disk repair disk optimization utility. Um, kind of just briefly go through some of the uh, major points in the product. Hardware test is one of the tests that we've had for the longest time. We've actually been a hardware testing product for well, almost 10, 11 years now with our uh, first version of TechTool Pro. Okay. And um, of course, we also have drive testing, testing the actual physical hard drive of the disk. A volume structure test, which we test uh, HFS, HFS plus volumes to make sure there's no uh, directory problems. And also our files category, which is looking for file structure damage or any type of file corruption. And we detect that and tell you which files are potentially bad. In the past, I had a problem with one of, one of my hard drives with the B3 or whatever. Right. Can that be solved? Yes, and that's where it, that type of issue would be found and solved in our volume structure test. Okay. So wh what's that problem, by the way, technically? The problem? With the B tree? Uh... The B tree is basically the balance tree. It's probably in the catalog file. Um, what happened was there might have been a misalignment of a pointer uh, to reference the file in the catalog that's no longer valid. And so what we do is we just reset it and find the file. Can you find physical errors? Physical errors on the drive, yes, and that would be found in our surface scan test. That's looking for bad, you know, blocks on the disk that may exist. Is it harder for you now that the hard drives are becoming larger and larger because we now reach one terabyte hard drives? Yes and no. I mean, surface scan test, if you're going to do a surface scan test, it's going to take quite some time if you have like a 500 gig hard drive or greater. You know, if you have something smaller, of course not. But, um, you know, you got to remember, processor speeds are faster, drive speeds are faster, yeah. so they all kind of, even though they're getting bigger in drive size, the drives are getting faster to kind of keep up with that pace. What do you think about the, the, the big theme right now about speaking about flash drive versus um, hard drive, how it's going to turn out, uh, what do you think about, um, will we have more flash drive in the future? I think so. I think really what you need to, what's going to happen here is uh, the flash drive technology is great to read from. It's writing to a flash disk right now is really the issue. The speed, you know, difference between a hard drive and a flash drive. Hard drives are still faster when it comes to actually writing the data to it. Um, once it, you know, becomes more, you know, parallel with each other and close-knit, then you can actually see flash media become more of an option over hard drives. Um, how is it feedback here? How is it going? Uh, feedback here has been incredible. It's been awesome. A lot of people have been coming by, uh, telling us how much they love the products. Uh, also, you know, telling us how much they love our other product, our little flash drive, uh, Tech Tool Protege, which comes with a full copy of Pro 4 and Disk Studio on there, with a bootable operating system on it. Yeah, that's cool. I guess you have a pretty a lot of customers coming only when the hard drive is crashed, right? We have them when they come by. You know. If they've had a bad hard drive, you know, they, we detected it, we saved their day, you know, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Um, we've had some that have come by and it's like, you know, you got me out of a, a really big jam at work. So you would recommend buy it before you have the problem? Typically it's nice to buy it before you have the problem. That way you can actually have maybe a precursor warning until it becomes impending disaster. And feel better. <laughs> yes, exactly. And let's find a song, let's play the original of the piece. So down here I follow you, Charles, I can raise the volume. Lower the volume. I can pause the music. Of course, play. 
you can also see right up here, I can click this button and flip around to see the back and I can see all the list of songs. Just click the button in the top again and I'm back to cover up. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And this is pretty cool. And this is pretty cool. It's pretty doggone cool. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. If I go back, using this back button, I'll get back to my list of artists. And again, I showed you how you can scroll just using your finger. You see there's an alphabet on the side. And I can just click a, a letter, like C, and find Coldplay. And let's play something from Coldplay. If I tap up here, I'm going to get my scrubber control. So I can jump forward in the song and scrub that. And I can turn the album, see the other side. If I tap, that control goes away. And what I can also do is just rotate the iPhone. And I'm going to go into cover here. So I can look through all of my covers. I can look through and find Green Day. Let's look at Green Day. Sorry, I thought I did that. Look at my head, what she's doing. She's not happy. Take the gorillas just like this. Danica is not happy. Find it and play a different song. Uh, uh, doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can hear that, yeah. You said I'm a dick. She gets the gist of it. Now, if I go back, I can see all my iPod video down here. And I can choose one to play. Let's choose The Office. Oh. Yeah. So Almost. An NBC presentation. <laughs> it's on my head. In the meantime, I will continue talking to you about the great other features of our phone. Let's talk about the phone for a minute and how iPhone reinvents the phone. Oh, oh there we go. Sorry, I'm going to come back to this again because it looks like it's working again. Let's play that video so you can see how. So from time to time, I send white faxes from himself. From the future. Dwight, at 8 a.m. today, someone poisons the coffee. Do not drink the coffee. More instructions will follow. Cordially, future Dwight. <laughs> well done.